As we begin the second quarter, it would be an understatement to say that investors have faced historic challenges over the past year. From the pandemic lockdowns to the sudden recovery, staying invested and maintaining a long-term view has been rewarded. During the first quarter, the S&P 500 gained 6.2% with dividends, while the Dow Jones rose 8.3%. This is true even though market and economic dynamics and the resulting barrage of headlines have made it difficult to feel comfortable with the bull market. Perhaps more than ever, investors need to stay disciplined on a number of challenging issues as this unique cycle evolves. One year ago, the markets were unhinged on the public health crisis as it spurred an economic crash, which in turn risked a credit crisis. Today, with the economy recovering and markets making new highs seemingly every week, the day-by-day -day state of the pandemic is less relevant to investors. Instead, attention has turned to the aftermath of the sharp crash and recovery, inflation, interest rates, and taxes. Inflation, which has been subdued for decades, is rising. However, there are two important distinctions to make. First, reflation, or prices returning to pre-pandemic levels, is different than runaway inflation. Even without excessive monetary and fiscal stimulus, it is natural to expect the prices of goods and services to normalize as the recovery continues. The break-even inflation rate in the tips market show this plainly, with the expected five-year inflation rate now above the 10-year rate. Second, Prices jumping for a small set of goods has different investment implications than a slow but broad rise in prices across the economy. For instance, the prices of gasoline, semiconductors, food, and more have spiked due to supply and demand factors over the past several months. This may have sector and tactical implications for balanced portfolios. However, this is distinct from the slow erosion of purchasing power and savings that we historically associate with inflation. Regardless of how we define inflation, it has already had a direct impact on markets. Interest rates have jumped this year across the board, from the three-year to the 30-year. The benchmark 10-year U.S. Treasury yield began the year at 0.91% and is now above 1.7%. These move, moves both reflect and influence the rotation that is occurring in the market. This has shifted returns from last year's high flyers, especially in tech and growth, to small caps, value, and sectors poised to benefit during the recovery. Of course, it's important to be diversified across all these areas of the market at this early stage in the cycle. Additionally, taxes are increasingly top of mind for investors. Like inflation, taxes are a complex subject that affect everyone in many ways. At the moment, the pending infrastructure bill and other proposals may increase corporate taxes from 21% to 28% and could raise the individual tax bills for higher earners as well. Clearly, this would have an impact on individual and business income statements. From a portfolio construction standpoint, taxes can directly affect decisions on how and when we use tax advantage vehicles. However, it's important to distinguish these specific effects from their impact on broad markets. The economy and the stock market have performed well in both low and high tax regimes over the past century, including when the top individual rates were around 90% and when corporate tax rates were 35%. For corporations especially, this is partly because the headline tax rate only tells part of the story and partly because companies tend to find a way to grow profitably regardless. So while taxes are a hot political topic and most would prefer lower tax bills, all things considered, the effects on, on the market are not as clear cut as it may seem. These are all challenges that will play out over the coming quarters and there will no doubt 
be new issues that investors need to grapple with as the cycle continues. As is always the case, maintaining investment discipline by understanding these concerns with a broad historical context is the best way for investors to achieve their financial goals. So the bottom line is, investors have faced many challenges over the past year and during the first quarter. There will no doubt be more market volatility in the quarters ahead. Investors ought to remain disciplined and consider the challenges of inflation, interest rates, and taxes with a long-term perspective. I'm Phil Calandra, and you've been On the Retire Road.